Welcome to The Real Deal, where we have real conversations with real people, entrepreneurs, and business owners alike. Welcome, welcome. My name is Sean, and I have two, two special guests on today. Kathy and Kirsten are a mother-daughter team specializing in effective conversation skills for work and parenting. Their unique conversation framework and a simple, effective approach on what they are known for. At work, they help entrepreneurs and professionals have curious conversations, even in challenging and uncomfortable situations, so they can optimize teams, better serve their clients to move their businesses forward. At home, they help parents be the best parent be the best when parenting gets hard, so they can better understand their kids, bringing more connection and joy to their home life. Kathy and Kirsten are founders of the Institute of Curiosity authors of The Power of Curiosity, How to Have Real Conversations That Create Collaboration, Innovation, and Understanding. And they're both certified executive coaches. Kathy has an MA in leadership. It is certified consultant emotional intelligence and is a grandmother of five and lives in Kelowna, British Columbia. And Kirsten has a BA in sociology, is a TEDx speaker and a mom of two teens, who recently left LA to give them a normal life and also lives in Kelowna, British Columbia. Now, before I start asking questions, I just wanted to also tell the listeners and the viewers that lucky for me, I am related to both of them. <laughs> Kathy is my aunt and Kirsten is my cousin and they are some of my mentors. And uh, I'm very, very grateful that they've given their time to come on this podcast. So, hello, ladies. Hi, Sean. Hi. Always good to see you. <laughs> Always good to see you. It's a bit of a different setting this time, but um, it's going to be a good conversation. So, what I start with, and I'm, I'm so grateful both of you could come on, So maybe I will direct questions one at a time just to start off with, because I ask my guests how you got started, like who you are and how you got started in the business in the first place. So maybe you can do a bit of a snippet each of how it all got started and how you became mother and daughter team. Kirsten? Well, I'll let, it was, it was mom's work that got us here. So I'll let Kathy start. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. So I started um, back in life. I was an occupational physio and occupational therapist many, many years ago. Um, and I returned to work when our, my kids were in school in occupational therapy, working in organizations to um, help with disability management, set up strategic planning for it, all of the things around that. And what I learned was that one of the critical, most critical pieces about people uh, returning to work was the influence of leaders, good, bad, indifferent, whatever. And so I uh, decided I've got to learn more about leadership. So I went back and did my master's in leadership. Then I thought, well, if I'm really going to make a change, I need to become an executive coach. So I did that. So then um, Kirsten and I started talking because she was also thinking about what she was going to do after her um, undergraduate degree. And what I was beginning to learn was that the skills of coaching were incredibly powerful. Um, and the skills of coaching, a lot of them were essentially curiosity or grounded in aspects of curiosity. So I started looking and exploring and having fun with curiosity. Kristen joined me on this trip and how many years later, we're still <laughs> alive and well and doing it. <laughs> yeah, you're still doing it. How many years is it, Kristen, that you've been working together? Well, we officially probably I don't know close to 10 maybe just under 10 unofficially longer so what I mean by that is we we work we did partnerships we piggied off each other um when I transitioned out of working as a producer when I was living in LA and I was pregnant and I knew that I couldn't work in that world anymore my mom coached me through the process and that's when I went back to school and became, became an executive coach and I was working in a completely different capacity because I was working in the entertainment industry. My, my thought was, 
um, I would support the people in it because it's just such an intense industry, so competitive. There's not a lot of support. And I did that. I coached executives in the industry and writers, producers, whatever. But it, what was interesting when we first started on this journey was that the work that Kathy was doing in healthcare, uh, working with doctors and nurses and using sort of a coach approach, which is what it was being called at the time, it was recognizing like, okay, yeah, the coaching skills are great and everything, but these conversation skills, like having, being curious in a conversation, that's such a life-changing thing. Uh, and so it was working together. We did that for a while before we actually then came together officially where we focused solely on conversation skills. Because, I mean, I learned the same thing. It was like everybody struggles with communication skills. And when I was hired as a producer, I was hired for my, my communication skills. Like wow. I prided myself on what a great communicator I was. And it wasn't until I had a kid that I realized I sucked. Like I was not good. I didn't know how to listen. I wasn't asking questions. I was judging. I was making assumptions. I mean, all the things that we all do and we're not taught these skills. And so it was just, it was a totally, for me, it was a completely different approach to what I was doing and being able to support people. And we got to do it together. Mm, yeah, which is fun, which is so great that both of you are doing it together and learning from each other. And, uh, and I'm, I'm in awe of you both and that, that the uh, book that you've written, I've read a few times that helps my business and helps me in relationships, which is great. So um, if you haven't read it yet, get on to it, I'll put it in the show notes. So um, it's such a fabulous book, uh, really great for teams and just your personal growth. It's um, when did you actually write that book? <laughs> well it took a while <laughs> yeah I, 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 it was a while back when you gave it to me well, I remember we, it, that. Was it was published in 2015 yes and we had to it, it was a really it was a huge test of our relationship to come out the other end stronger and more connected than we went into it because it's not easy writing a book with someone else especially in a higher you know a, a position or a, a relationship that's considered hierarchical Oh, yes, of course. But I also, I think it, 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 it was not easy and it spoke to the success of the skills. Yes. Because for the first time, for me anyway, it's one thing when you put those skills to work with your clients and you're teaching them and you're using them yourself. But I mean, we really had to hone in on those skills with the two of us, right? Where we really had to learn how to be more curious and more open and listen without judging. And it, so I think that come, it was, it was, such an interesting organic process writing the book because what we were writing about we were living so deeply in the moment but by the time the project was over we were much closer we were better I think I don't know my mom could may or may not disagree but I think it was such a great process for us that yeah. I certainly felt very proud about the end result because yes. I knew that we were putting something out into the world that was so solid that totally worked because we not only we were walking our talk and that felt good in mm -hmm. the realm of, you know, self-help and communication and whatever, because there's so much out there and a lot of it's theory. So it was really nice to be able to produce a book and offer people a book with actual tangible skills that work. Yes. Yeah. And that's how I felt when I read it. So thank you for that. That is something you've impacted me on that. And I'm sure you've impacted a lot of business owners around the world. So that's fantastic. Um, I really am curious. See, I, I get curious too. I think must run in the family. <laughs> um, I, I'm very curious who works with who. I mean, I think Kirsten, from what I know, works with the parents more. And Aunt Kathy, who do you work with? More of the leaders. Yeah. And Kirsten works with leaders at times, and I work with parents at times. But it's more if you're going to delineate the two, that would be the delineation. Okay. So Kathy, oh, go ahead, Kristen. No, I, I was going to say, I, I just, it, it's interesting. It's funny because I never set out to work with parents. It was never something that I thought, you know, I intentionally did. It was becoming a parent that realized how desperate we needed these skills were in the parenting world because we're not taught parenting skills. Like we're not taught communication skills. So um, it's funny when we talk about this, like leadership and parenting, because yeah, it's, it's funny how we just get into these roles, but yes, I do the parenting part. I'm passionate, like it was bizarrely passionate 
about the parenting part. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Well, parenting is leadership, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It's so just you not are called doing... that. What, was, what did you say? It's just not called that. It's not recognized as that. No. It's not really recognized as a job. It's not recognized with a lot of value, ironically, right? But yes, it is probably the most important leadership job that we do. And a lot would say that um, leaders are parents. Mm. I'm not saying I agree with it, but there is, there's a crossover between the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. I can see that in my household, as well as in um, different industries as a teacher I was working in too. So it's, um, it's much needed. And you actually focus on um, hard conversations. Is that correct? That's part of what we do for sure. A big yeah. part. Okay. And how do you do that, Kathy? Well, it started, um, <laughs> it started when I was working in healthcare in the early 2000s when I, and I would, we would do a workshop and then I would work with triads and I was working with a triad and one of them started sharing a story of when um, she had met with a doctor the week before, and it was going to be a really hard conversation. And so she thought it was, it was, she was not, didn't have a lot of hope, but she really had to speak up for this child who uh, was very upset about a situation. So she decided on the walk down to meet him that she would start asking, she would be curious. It was going to be different for her, but she was going to stick to this. And she was. And a conversation that started out with, I don't have time for this, turned into 45 minutes in a hallway. Because as she started asking questions, the, the physician became more open to the conversation and they were able to find common ground and move forward. So she was very excited and we started playing with this and wow, this is super exciting. And just a few months before we were uh, publishing, before we completed the writing of our book, science came out through um, uh, the we, uh, it's uh, Judith Glazer's work. I'm trying to think what the organization is called. And she um, found that there is research that says when we are collaborating with another, when we're curious, the first question opens our heart or our, and dopamine is released. And the second, our mind and um, oxytocin and dopamine are released. So we begin to feel good. And that's what happens in a conversation, in challenging conversation, because one per they're both feeling tense. Mm -hmm. and one person is able to relax and ask an open question. And that the second person will respond and with the second question, it begins to open the other person up more and more. My, my belief is, although I haven't seen any research around this, is that the contagion, there's a contagion factor around emotions so that when one person is very tense, you know that if you see someone who's very tense, there, there's a, a contagion of that emotion flowing over to you. I think it goes the other way also. So when um, if I become curious with someone, dopamine and oxytocin are being released. And I think that moves to the other person as they start responding to and asking and being open to questions. So it sounds incredibly easy. And yet when you start asking questions and exploring and the open questions um, and really being present in the moment and listening to what's being said, then you're able to find common ground with the other person and move forward. Uh -huh. And it's, we find it's highly effective. And the feedback we get is that it's highly effective. Mm, that's amazing. So do you actually do it in a couple setting if you do it in couples? Or is it just in leadership roles with businesses? Kirsten, do you want to? You know, we, yeah, we do with, I mean, with anybody, really. I mean, these skills are, are available to anybody. Um, we teach the skills and then we coach it's kind of, it depends on what you're looking for, but anybody, any listener can go and do this themselves. I mean, essentially the, the crux of it is being curious in conversations. And so what we've learned, at least for me, is that when we go into a conversation, we're normally focused on sharing an opinion or listening to insert ourselves. Or if we get emotional in hard conversations, it's normally we're seeking to be heard. We're not listening to understand, right? We listen to lecture. And what happens is that we shut down. We're not open to the different perspectives, but when you're curious and you ask the questions and you understand different perspectives, 
right? You understand what's going on for the other person because curiosity takes the, sh the, the focus off of self of like, what do I need to get out there to, okay, I need to better understand what's going on for this person so that we can find that common ground to figure out how to move forward. When you have that understanding, you can't have conflict. So you can be a couple, 100%. I mean, all couples struggle. And the more curious you can be, the less judgmental you are, which happens with the people that we love the most, right? Those are the ones we feel most comfortable saying things that we regret later. Yes. Or you can be leaders. I mean, the skills essentially are the same and they're extremely powerful. These skills are super powerful, especially with kids because the parent's voice becomes the kid's internal voice, right? So in those challenging moments, it's easy to go to that place of shame. It's easy to go to the place of telling rather than saying, okay, what's going on for you? How do you want to solve this problem? So it's really, it's shifting the focus from self to better understanding other, uh, which is the game-changing part. That's the part creating that understanding shifts everything. Mm. We so too often, we all believe that our perspective is the only one. And at least it's for yeah. sure the only one that's important. And in yeah. an emotional situation, I need to be heard. Mm -hmm. I need to what I'm saying is most important. Mm -hmm. When we sit back and ask a question, and then understand, listen to what the other person has to say and begin to understand their perspective. It gives us it's such a gift it gives us a totally different way of looking at things mm -hmm. and it's, it broadens the dimensions to a place where we can begin oh my gosh well I thought you thought this when in fact you thought that mm. and guaranteed a hundred percent of the time when we assume someone else is thinking the same thing we are they're not you know they, the research shows that in a car accident if there are 10 people who see an accident no two are going to see it exactly the same way. It's the same thing. None of us have exactly the same perspectives. So until we open up and allow we, the other person to share their perspective, we're not going to know that. And all by going at some telling and shouting and getting angry, we're just creating more of a cortisol reaction, which is fear. And it's just going to shut down everything. Mm. Or people are going to say words that they wish they could then take back later. <laughs> uh, yes, which I'm sure a lot of people do. And that is quite uh, a valid comment there, Aunt Kathy. Um, it's, it's, an, it's actually communication is the biggest thing in human nature, yet we forget that communication is there and how we actually do communicate. So what are some of the steps that you go through um, Kristen, with the parents, for instance, to help them communicate with their children? So this can be with anybody. Uh, and and I, I just want to circle back to what you said, because I think it's really important. And this is the, this was the aha that I had that took me down the path that we're on was this realization that communication is the foundation of every relationship. It's the foundation of business. It's the foundation of love, marriage, parenting, whatever, you name it. These are skills that we're not taught right? We're, we're not taught how to listen. We're not taught how to ask questions. We're, we're not taught anything in terms of how to communicate, especially in challenging situations. So we all bring to the table, we just do what we know. And what I learned way back when, one of the ahas that I had when I was working with um, in the entertainment industry, I remember I was talking to, it was, a, I mean, it doesn't matter who, she was an executive, but she was saying how when my back is up against the wall, my parents voice comes out of my mouth. Mm, right? Yeah. We hear our parents in our voice, whether we want to, or we don't want to, we like it, we don't like it, it's effective, it's not effective. We do what we know, because it's all we've been taught, right? Mm -hmm. Especially in those emotional moments. So it's when you go into a conversation, and you understand that you have choices, you understand that you know, you can be curious or you can be not be curious. You know, you're choosing to intentionally, to have an intentional conversation with somebody and you want to communicate effectively. The first thing you need to do is be present, which is really hard in the world in which we live because there's a lot of stressors. There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot going on around us. Uh -huh. If we're not present in a conversation, we're not going to be able to listen. And if we can't listen, then we're not going to hear any, it's just useless. It's a, it, there's no point in having the conversation anyway. So the first step is just, being present, grounding yourself, turning down the little voice in your head, you know, paying attention to 
what you may be feeling or not feeling, like really intentionally taking a deep breath to say, okay, I am giving my undivided attention, I'm putting away my phone, and I'm going to focus on what this person has to say. Then the next step is that you want to choose how you process the information. Now, a lot of us process the information based on our own lens and our own experience, right? So we're listening to insert ourselves, to share our brilliant wisdom. Well, I think you and I want you and I want this and whatever, right? So we're processing it through our own lens and our own experience. Or we could be processing it in a way where we're judging the listener without even realizing it, right? We're not intending to judge, but we want to fix and solve, right? It sounds like fixing, solving. You should do this. You know, you should do that, right? We're offering wisdom again. Or you can listen to understand. And that's where curiosity comes into play, where we all say, okay, this is not about me and my needs. This is about understanding what's going on for the person that I'm listening to. So you're choosing to be open and curious so that you can listen to learn what the person is saying. And then you're asking open questions to better understand, like, what did you mean by that? Um, how do you you want to move forward, you know, how, whatever it is where the conversation is going, but staying in that place of being open and curious so that you can better understand them. Now, it's important people understand this doesn't mean that you're going to like what you hear. This doesn't mean that you have to agree with what you hear, right? That's not the goal. The goal is to understand it. And when we live in a really polarized world mm -hmm. for so many different reasons, it's really important that we learn how to cross the divide, right? And listen to to understand what's going on for people. That doesn't mean, again, we have to like or agree with what they're saying, but we need to better understand it. And that's how we build relationships. That's how we make connection, mm -hmm. right? Otherwise, we just stay in our little bubbles and we communicate and we, you know, I call it the algorithm effect where it's like we pick our friends based on the things that we like and we know and our social media feeds are the things that we like and we know we only want to see the things that we like and we know and the moment something becomes uncomfortable we cut it out of our lives and we cut it out of our feed or we shut them down and we don't mm. want to talk about it mm. right yeah it's not effective that only creates conflict mm. so if you can stay in that place of curiosity and just be present to listen to understand it is game changing but you have to make a conscious choice. Mm, interesting. Yes, listen to understand. That's a big, big thing that um, goes around a lot of people. And it's quite challenging for people to listen to actually understand. How, I mean, that's a challenging part. So how would you do that with a client or, a, you know, a family member or, well, anyone really um, in a relationship? Let's, let's, let's pick a, an entrepreneur, business entrepreneur. And they were, yeah, go ahead. What? I, yeah, go oh, ahead. Right. I'll, okay. I'll ask the question again. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. I heard the question, Sean. Um, well, there are a few different ways that we do that. One is we have a, seri a, a series of modules, which they can sign up for and they can take. The next level up would be modules plus um, debriefing questions. The next one up would be modules plus coaching, um, or it can be just straight coaching uh -huh. because that's, we, I mean, as, a, as an executive coach, we all bring our own biases to the table. And um, I'm always quite clear. And I think Kristen is too, that we say our bias is curiosity. And if you're not interested in exploring how you see things from a lens of curiosity, then not the right coach for you. So we we do it sort of different ways. We can do it um, if two or three entrepreneurs wanted to take the modules together and then do triad coaching. Um, we do workshops. Uh, yep. We have a book, as you yes. read yes. earlier. So do you do you workshops can read online? And then, yes, Sorry, go ahead. But, um, and yeah, we have workshops that we do over Zoom now. We haven't done them face to face for a while um, mm -hmm. on all the communication skills. So there, there's a, 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 a an extensive menu of different ways. And what have I forgotten, Kirsten? No, I was just going to say, I mean, since your family, we'll just we're going to just tell you, did you, you want to like specifically how would you go through that process with an entrepreneur? to teach them how to listen to understand is that where well, you yeah just a couple just, how do we tips deliver the... oh okay yeah just just more okay. of a couple tips not give us the whole how do you do it 
because that's giving away everything, right? But just giving a little bit of insight and value into what you do with entrepreneurs. Well, listening to understand is it, first of all, it takes practice and it takes self-awareness. And so it's going through the same process as what I was saying before. It's learning to be present so that you listen. And then it's in those conversations, the intention is what can I be curious about? So, I mean, when we're working with clients, it's a, it's a relationship in which you're talking to them where they're setting goals, you know, you're figuring out specifics in which to talk. It, it's hard to use that as an example, really. Um, but it's, anybody can do it. I guess what I'm trying to say is any listener at this point can go into their next conversation and say, I'm going to be present. What do I want to be curious about so that I can listen to learn and understand? So it's not about me. It's about understanding what's going on for them. If mm -hmm. the thought process in your head, if you're thinking about responding, then you're not present. If you're thinking about like, well, I don't like that, or I don't believe them, you're not present, right? You're processing through your own lens and your own experience. If you're thinking, okay, I need to understand. So what did you mean by that? Tell me more. Um, I'm trying to think of a conversation, like how, how do you want to solve this problem? What do you think would work here instead? You know, so recently I was talking to a client. She works in the wine business. She was having problems with customer relation. They would have an anger, like they would come at her because they wanted something she couldn't give them. Mm -hmm. She would just say, I understand, I understand, I understand, right? So then it was working to say, okay, instead of just saying understand, how can you be curious to find out what it is they need to have better customer service, right? So it was shifting to that place of asking the questions, what would you like instead? You know, what would be helpful for you in this moment? I'm being very vague here, not to give away any, way, any details, but for her, it was, she needed to learn how to be, or she had to shift the mentality to be more curious with her clients so she could better serve them. Because she thought just by saying, I understand, it was building a relationship, but they were frustrated because they weren't getting what they wanted. And there was never a door to be opened for her to find out what they wanted. And it was scary as well because she was just like, it's emotional and it's scary. So when you're able to ask those questions and be curious to listen what's going on for them, it puts you in a, as an entrepreneur, it allows you to be in a position to better serve your clients so you can over serve them, right? You can over deliver because you know exactly what their needs are rather than just saying, I understand, I understand, and then try to figure it out on your own. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really key point where in, for entrepreneurs, if they're providing a service or they're providing a product, it doesn't really matter. Too often we go into um, a first, an introductory meeting with a potential client. Oh, I can do this for you. Oh, I can do, I can do, I can do. Mm -hmm. And never giving them that opportunity to have a voice to be seen, heard, and understood. To, and, and once we do that, we better appreciate what their needs are, what their expectations are. And then we can craft a, a, a marketing pitch, shall you say, around mm -hmm. what they've said so that we're there here. Yep, she hears me. She's nailed it. That's exactly what I want. We can't do that unless, as Kirsten said, we understand what their needs are. Mm -hmm. So by going in and just listening, and, you know, there's, we have this, this sense that unless I'm talking, I'm not giving value. When we're listening, we, we get the opportunity to learn and understand so that when we do speak, we're giving even more value. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Giving more value even when you're listening. That's um, fantastic. Uh, very good technique for a lot of business owners and, and entrepreneurs around my network. Um, that will be listening to this podcast because there is a lot of business owners that will be listening to this. So that's fantastic. Um, a couple more questions because we're running out of time. Um, and that went so quickly. I would like to speak to you and ask you more questions. <laughs> um, okay. So how can people find you? We have a website, <laughs> instituteofcuriosity.com. You can always find us there. We're on Instagram ish. I mean, we're there, but like I'm learning really to, I'm not very good at it, <laughs> but we are there. So you can follow us there as well. I know it's not what people want to hear. Social media doesn't bring me joy. Look, 
there I said it, I admit it. That's just the way it is. I know I'm supposed to be doing it, but we have a newsletter. We do bi-weekly newsletters. We give, listen, the truth is we give a lot away for free. That's really the truth of the matter is. Kathy and I are huge. We value value. So a lot of what we do is just providing stuff for free because we recognize that these are skills that are not taught. Very few people teach these skills and they are fundamental to our success. So our website has the newsletter. We have, our website has the programs and um, you can basically find everything there. But join our newsletter because we do give a lot away for free. Amazing. Yes, I just went on that um, you know, on your website and it looked fantastic. I almost signed up, get started now. I went, <laughs> oh yeah, okay, that sounds good. So it, it's obviously working unconsciously. <laughs> fantastic. Um, okay, so that's fantastic. Now what um, I usually ask all my guests is if there was one thing that you wanted people to get out of this podcast talk together, what would it be and why? Do you want to go first, Kathy? Okay, well, actually, we can give them two things because we can each give one. That's right. <laughs> one of you. You go first, Aunt Kathy. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, I, I will say the one thing. Mm, that's a tough one. Listening. I'm going to go with listening. If we don't listen to others, it doesn't matter how much we're open and not judging. It doesn't matter the other things. We'll never understand unless we really listen to what others have to say. Perfect. Oh, oh good. I get the easy one then. I'm going to say <laughs> curiosity, the, the importance of being curious. And I think as an entrepreneur, we take a lot for granted when we go to sit down for intakes or when we're networking. And a lot of the times we get in that mindset where we want to sell, 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 attract, 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 you know, sign up, sign up, sign up, whatever it may mm. be. Mm. And we're, we get stuck in our head. So we aren't present, we aren't listening, and we aren't curious to learn more about other people. And really, in, as an entrepreneur, your foundation is relationships. It's all about building relationships. It's all about serving the needs of your clients. And you cannot do that unless you understand what they need. And the only way to do that is by being curious. So the more curious you are, the more you're going to understand. And it's just simply a mindset shift. We all have the ability to be curious. It's just setting the intention and ensuring that you do it. Mm, beautiful. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Setting the intention and listening. Perfect. Being curious. I love those. Great takeaways. Thank you so much for your time, ladies. I'm going to just end the call now. Um, this is The Real Deal with Sean Matthews, where we have real conversations with real people, entrepreneurs and business owners alike. Thank you both so much for coming on today. It's been great seeing your faces. And I really want to do this soon, maybe off of my podcast. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Sean. for having us. Yes, it's been great being here. Goodbye, everyone.